Hi everyone, my name is Pierre Charbonneau. So today's video will start uh, with the generation techniques uh, for the thread dump analysis. So if you have not done already, I suggest that you first go through our first video with uh, which are covering the fundamentals on thread dump analysis. So let's have a look at the agenda for uh, today. So essentially we're going to learn how to generate thread dump using Oracle WebLogic 12C. So that's our scope for today. The future uh, video will include uh, the other technologies uh, like Apache Tomcat and also um, the uh, IBM WebSphere and JBoss as well. So technology stack uh, that we're going to use today. So essentially the last specification we're going to use um, Java Hotspot 1.8, which is essentially service pack 60, 64 bit. We're going to use, uh, of course, our recovery logic 12C, 12.1.3, uh, and uh, also the uh, Ubuntu uh, 15.04, Linux kernel uh, 3.19. Okay, so this is what we're going to use in terms of technology for our LAN. Uh, the tools we're going to use for Tredem generation, essentially four tools we'll see today. The OS native command, of course, uh, which is kill minus 3 with a Java PID. The GDK J stack utility, which uh, I found very useful, especially on Windows and uh, environment. Java Visual VM, of course, which is one of my uh, preferred tool uh, for uh, typical troubleshooting there on a Java technology. And of course, the uh, Oracle Logic Admin Console, which you will see can be useful for certain scenarios. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so as you can see, this is uh, our lab set up here. So uh, we're using the Ubuntu, of course, as I mentioned, 15.04, 64-bit. So to save some time, I did, uh, of course, pre, uh, pre-start most of the processes here. So we're, we're going essentially to focus on the uh, thread dump generation techniques here. Okay, so so what you see is actually I have a WebLogic server running. As I mentioned, I'm using the WebLogic 12C. So I, I did uh, essentially create a standalone WebLogic 12C Java process. So, and this is a typical environment, of course, this is the, um, the desktop version of um, Ubuntu. So we're kind of allowing to do a couple of things there, desktop, and of course, uh, getting access to the terminal, uh, Linux kernel there. So, so let's say you're supporting a um, Java-based environments. And so essentially the, the typical thing you want to get is the Java process, right? Uh, PID process, which is a typical thing you want to do when, uh, to, uh, to generate the thread dump. So typical command they use is the PS grip Java, as I just did. It's going to list you all the Java processes running on your server. Now the one that we need here is the one you're, uh, with your WebLogic environment. So depending on your setup of WebLogic, you, of course you may have one, uh, more than one instances, right? Let's say in your production environment. So essentially in our case, the PID is 2683. So that's the first technique to generate thread dump. So you need to um, the PID of the Java process. And the command to use is skill minus three. And then you use the PID of the Java process, right? And kill minus three. Of course, don't do kill minus nine, obviously, right? Otherwise, you'll be killing your process. So kill minus three is a native command. Essentially, it's sending a signal, you could see, sending a signal to the process, which will initiate the uh, hotspot JVM to generate a thread dump. Now, when you're using that technique, it will generate the output, the standard output log. So depending on the technology, in this case, we're using uh, WebLogic, it's going to print it to the standard output log of the server itself, right? So we can see here, right, the actual thread dump with all the detail about the, the threads, of course, as, as we saw in the uh, fundamentals. And of course, at the very end, uh, you get some of the uh, garbage collection threads and the, the heap breakdown. Now, this technique is, of course, the most common one used, right, by most uh, production support uh, individuals. Of course, it's very useful. It's also the most responsive, right? So even if your server is in, uh, is in big trouble, you may have sometimes some issues using other tools, like other tools like uh, Java Visual VM. And I think sometimes when the, uh, the instance is running close to other memory and other issues, sometimes you may have you may struggle just attached to the process by itself. So kill minus three at some point, it's I found still very quite responsive there. Even if your uh, JVM is in trouble, it will um, it will still generate the thread them most of the time there. Okay. So now the limitation with the technique, of course, is it, it, it will generate the data from that log, right? So of course it means it means you have, you gotta extract the data from the log itself. You may be able to read it, uh, like as we can see here. So of course if you start generating many many snapshots, it can become um, a bit uh, a lot of noise in the log, right? So um, what I would recommend, of course, make sure that you're you're splitting the log on a regular basis so we can 
regularly extract red DOM easily from, from the data, right? So that's kind of a limitation of that technique here, okay? So kill minus three, very basic, as I mentioned. Of course, you can run this command mul multiple times. You see, it generate just data. It's it's very fast. It's non-intrusive for the JVM. It's, it just takes a few milliseconds of generation. So the technique number two, so let's say you want to have the data uh, straight from that view, right? You may not want you to get a, a thread dump directly here. So the other technique that I use is, um, as I mentioned, was the JSTAC utility, right? So JSTAC is different, right? It will do a remote attach to the PID process, and it's going to print the thread dump here at that location, right? So we're going to use a JSTAC. Let's actually use a JSTAC command from the version that, that, that you want, right? You can explicitly uh, specify which JDK JSTAC you want to use. Now keep in mind, JSTAC is part of JDK itself, not the GRE, okay? So you need to go under the JDK bin folder, and then you can put the PID even more to um, to get the data. And as you can see, the, the JSTAC is very useful because it, uh, it's going to do an attach, and then going to generate the full thread DOM in your console, as opposed to native command will will print it in the log, the JSTAC will print you directly in the uh, in the actual console that you want. So that, that I found sometimes very useful, right? So let's say I want to do a, a thread DOM live, uh, or if you're dealing with a very large file on the server, sometimes it can be very useful just for JSTAC. And you can see the beginning of the thread DOM here uh, as in our environment. The environment doesn't have too much traffic right now, of course, so you'll see the basic threads, our logic only for now. So we see just, um, you know, those are the threads from the socket moxer, right? They are essentially waiting for uh, incoming requests, so they are not doing anything right now. So you see it's very useful, right? You can have a look quickly at the thread dump from JSTAC in that, that view. Um, and it's, again, it's it's very fast as well, plus JSTAC can, can print on native frames as well. Um, so if you need to go to that level, but most of the time you don't need to go there. You just need to stick at the Java level of the stack trace, okay? So we can definitely see uh, the big thread dump here and again it's very fast you can done that pretty non-intrusive we just did another one right so and, and you will see in the future session when we start to generate load and simulate problems I, I will go back to these techniques of course and you'll be able to compare um, and, and decide which one that you would prefer to use but again as I said yeah, I would recommend that you learn each of them because depending on the scenarios, you may have to fall back on one or the other. So there's not necessarily one best way, right? So it's uh, always uh, depending on certain uh, scenarios. Okay. So very basic so far, two native command. Now, like I mentioned, these are the two main techniques. Now, the um, if you're using Java Visual VM, so that was also in scope our session, right? So here I have Java VM running. Now, of course, I have the desktop version, right? As I mentioned, I have Ubuntu. So in this case, it, it did auto-detect uh, locally, right? Uh, from the Linux kernel, it, it did detect my Roblox process running. So Java VM is very useful for that, especially if you have uh, running either on Windows, or, yeah, but even you can do remote attach as well. You don't need a desktop version, right? Of course, uh, even my side, I work on a lot of environments where we'll just do remote attach of Java Visual VM and you get the same value as, as well. So in this case, we can see the WebLogic process and so a couple of things that you can do. So let's see, in this case, you want to generate a thread dump, right? You can go to the thread view and you get, first you get a view of all the running threads. And then from that view, you can get a thread dump either by right clicking here, thread dump, or you can from that view as well. That I find interesting because first you get a look of all the threads. So Java Visual will give you at least a, a view on, on the threads, the one in running state, uh, even some of the thread in the block state, and then you can get a thread dump. Right, so very similar uh, as we just did, and and, and of course uh, the value again is you, you you don't get to to extract the data from the output log as opposed to native command. In this case, you get the data directly in Java Visual VM, right? Similar to JSTAC, but it's already um, pre-formatted with some color and everything. So that I found very useful. Of course, if you had the chance to have uh, Java Visual VM running, that's what I would recommend. It's very easy. Now again, like I mentioned. If your environment is, is facing performance problem like out of memory, a lot of pause time, you may find um, JSTAC and Java VM struggling a bit. Okay, that, that's some of the issues that I've seen in production. So please learn how to use a native command, right? As we just explained, because that's your ultimate way of generating thread dump, especially when your environment is in trouble. And, and the reality is that most of the time the environment is in trouble, right? When we need a thread dump, of course, trouble means the JVM could still be healthy. So you can fall back on these two techniques. Uh, but if JVM is struggling at the uh, garbage collection, then you may have to fall back on a native, okay? 
So very, um, as I said, it can generate multiple snapshots, right? It's very fast also from Java Visual VM, depending on the spec of your hardware and uh, environment. So, so that's a fun, very useful technique as well. Now, we're not going to go too far with the um, Java Visual VM today. So I'm going to show you the four technique right now. Okay, so, so far, native that I just explained, JSTAC, Java Visual VM, Ultra Dumb Command. Now, there's another option that you may, not, may or may not have realized so far, right? It's from the admin console of Blogic itself. Yes, and, and sometimes I find it very uh, practical too. And I will show you why, right? So this is our WebLogic console. Um, so I created, as I said, a standalone uh, server. And right now there's, there's not much running um, in that environment. And as I mentioned later on, we're going to go back with uh, some other labs to simulate problems. So essentially in, under the server, you'll see there's a monitoring tab, right? There were logic. And then you have other tabs. The one that we care about is a threads tab, okay? So in this case, you get the breakdown of all the threads, right? Of WebLogic, and there's a this option called dump thread stack from the WebLogic console, right? So what I find useful is that you can refresh that view, right? And then you'll be able to see the state of of the threads, and then when you see, for instance, for example, some hugging thread, hugging thread typically will means a thread executing the same request, let's say more than five seconds or so. So WebLogic will identify it as a hugging thread or a hugger. So in this case, when you start to see these uh, a buildup of hugging threads, you can get a thread dump by just clicking the dump stack. Now you can see from that view, right? Essentially, we get the same data, or you think you get the same data, right? From that we look. So what is missing here? Do you see anything missing? Right? So what is missing? You should be able to see something is missing. So you will notice that the stack trace is the same, but let's look at the format, right? If you go at Java Visual VM, you see you get all the native full thread dump, get even the state of the, um, the JIT, like in mixed mode, and you get a, all the native information on the threads, right? Including the, um, the lock, the object monitor lock IDs as well. So this is unfortunately what is missing from that view, right? So from WebLogic, that's the limitation. So you, you will not necessarily be getting um, all the um, all the information. So th that's what I found. Depending on the type of analysis that you want to do, this technique is very useful. Let's say you want to look at the, uh, let's say you have a, a problem, a slowness condition, and you, you can monitor the threads, like I, like I said earlier, the hugging thread, and then you get quickly a thread dump, and then focus on the stack trace. Okay, to see what the application is doing, where it's waiting, is it's waiting from a database, a remote system, or may, maybe there's some lock contention issue. Now, depending on the type of issue, this technique will be useful enough by its by itself. Uh, but as soon as you need to do uh, to do more deep dive, like uh, lock contention issue, deadlocks, this is why you need to fall back on the uh, native commands or Java Visual VM or JSTAC because they have much more information on the uh, ID and everything. It's, this view is not going to show you all the details, but I would still recommend that you use it um, in your day-to-day -day when you're doing some troubleshooting. Okay. Now, another limitation of this technique also is the admin server needs to be healthy. So sometimes, depending on the environment, you may have a buildup of threads and you won't be able to log into the server. So, of course, in this case, you want to fall back on the um, JSTAC or the native mode again, as as we saw, which is always the ultimate way to uh, to get thread them. Okay, but I still recommend that you use it because again, certain lightweight scenarios you don't you don't need to go at the server level. So instead of spending too much time get a native thread dump, extract the data, just go quickly to the console, get a peek at the threads, see what they are doing. Uh, even when the server is healthy, it's a good practice, right? So you can uh, generate thread dump as a baseline. So you will to give you on the healthy scenario, how many threads are running, what they are doing, and you can compare that view when, uh, when you're starting to get, let's say, a uh, response time degradation. So it's always good practice to do some baseline comparison as, as well, okay? So that's essentially it, the four techniques that we saw uh, today. For the part two, as I mentioned, we're going to uh, see similar techniques, but this time we'll be using um, Apache Tomcat um, to do that, since obviously Tomcat is a very popular uh, survey container, so we're going to use it with a different tool, so we can show you this technique also uh, across other technologies, okay? Well, I hope you appreciated this session, and please feel free to comment if you have any questions um, on these techniques. Thank you.